Hey guys, Count CL Glenn with Bridging the Gap, where we talk about bridging the generational gap as well as the wealth gap. We literally take you step by step and tell you how to bridge that gap from where you are to where you want to be uh, from the aspect of a boomer, somebody that's been there, done that, and the exer. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell notification. We want to let you know as soon as we drop something, we want you guys to get it. We want you to be first. So make sure you do those two things for us and we can't wait to drop some more content. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching, welcome to Bridging the Gap. Uh, we're on episode 18. I'm your host, Councilor Glenn. Hey, William V. Thompson, and I got a confession to make, guys. I've known this guy for a long time. I've <laughs> never seen him with a sports coat on like that. His wife had something to do with that, folks. Tell me. No, man. I I've known you for seven, <laughs> eight, probably 10 years. I have never seeing you probably you probably got a tie in your pocket no 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 tie, no tie no tie no tie all right what you got a job interview or what? no job interview i do have a we bought a house in greensboro that was on a condemned list gotcha okay so i got a meeting today with the uh housing minimum housing standard i got people. you yeah so they uh just want to impress them we we got the issues fixed at the home but uh plus i just got a fresh haircut so you know, i you see it bro wanna... that was next on my list too that was next <laughs> You always want to look fresh when you get a cut. You know, uh, so. I got you, I got you. But you know, it's a good thing. And I'm looking forward to talking about that one day in the near future about the real estate and yes, condemned sir. property. Because yep. so often when people hear the word real estate and condemned property, they run from it. But a lot of investors like you see value oh, in it. Absolutely. So, so guys, stay tuned. I'm not sure in the next few weeks we're going to talk about that because, again, it's it's a pipeline no matter where you are. That's a gold mine. But today is something totally different. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about uh, cutting TED. Okay. Um, cutting expenses with the business. With the, okay, with the business. Okay. But I, I wanted to deviate from that just a brief second. I, I saw a tweet last night, and I haven't looked up the stats, so don't hold it to don't okay. hold me to it. I got you. And it said that I thought this would be interesting. Millennials hold four point one eight percent of all wealth. There are now 40 year old millennials. So 40 and younger. Okay. Hold 4.8% of all wealth. Okay. At the same age, Generation X had 9%. At the same age? Yeah. When, when, when. I got you. I got you. 40 okay. and below for X. I got you. 9%. Wow. At the same age, boomers had 21%. I'm a little surprised by that. Yeah. I haven't checked the stats on it. And they were saying the largest generation, I believe, uh, millennials in history did what the system told them to do and become the most educated in history. Now they're the poorest. I, I am really a little surprised by that. But, well, and I'm going to tell you, and, I, and I'm, I'm rationalizing now, but I, I'm sort of understanding it better. I would imagine within that group, you probably have that 4.8% of millennials who are wealthy. Their wealth probably exceeds the average boomer's wealth at the same age period. I see what you're saying. Okay. And so, I, so what I'm saying is I believe that the millennials wealth gap is probably bigger than the boomers wealth gap at the same age. Yeah. Now I am looking at a, a statistic and it said that millennials household net worth has increased to about 51,000 okay. and we're significantly behind us amassing wealth. We're about 11% behind the previous generation. Boy. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to dig a little deep on that, but yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a little surprising, but anyway, but okay. Do you millennials out there or Xers or boomers? It doesn't matter. We got some for you. Absolutely. Right. So today we're talking about cutting, cutting Ted expenses with the business. Okay. Now, does this have a P4 or how, how, how did you break this one down? Well, well, this one's going to, I'm, I'm going to stay true to Ted a little bit on this okay. one. Okay. And I'm probably not even going to go for my normal script because I, I think it's very important that people really get this. I think first of all, when you're talking about uh, cutting expenses, people have to understand that in a business, if you were looking at a publicly traded company, they are looking at increasing cash flow, either one, expanding their gener generosity, expanding their geographic reach. In other words, if they're only in the U.S., they want to get to Canada and Mexico and Europe and Asia, et cetera. Right. That's one way. Also, they're looking to increase their profit margins being based on they sell the prop they sell the property, they sell the services at a higher price and uh, their cost goes down and they're looking to get uh, a reduction in cost. Okay. okay. So, but so often people are so driven by increasing income that we forget that with a business, one of the best ways to increase a business cash flow is going to reduce TED. 
Right. Uh, now, the great thing about when you reduce expenses, Wall Street does not always reward you in the price of the stock going up. But what normally happens, if, if let's say if a company reduces their cost by, I'm going to say a half a billion dollars a year. Initially, the stock market is not going to embrace that as being a good sign because they didn't get any new subscriptions like a Netflix. They didn't sell more phones like an iPhone with Apple, but they still increase cash flow a billion dollars. However, within time, that billion dollars is going to allow them to hire more people, mm -hmm. to do more marketing and advertising, to employ more quality people and expand. And then within time, it will impact their revenue. So what I'm saying to people, even initially, when you think about the reduction of expenses, you don't get excited. But when you reduce things like your taxes, your expenses and your debt, which we're going to talk about today, a lot of people don't get turned on by that. However, it's that extra fleet free flowing cash flow tax free, right? That allows you to grow and expand your company. And they're going to learn how today. So the same thing we talked about with without a real business. Yeah, you got it, man. Okay. Yeah, you okay. got it. So what's the first step? The thing it goes back to taxes. You know, one of the first things you have to do with the tax uh, business is you have to understand the best entity. Okay. You know, I mean, people think about sole proprietorship, that's by default. Then people think about a partnership and then an S corp and a C corp. But the thing, all that sounds nice wrapped in an LLC, but the key question is how do you want to be taxed? Right. And with a business, if you take the time to really do tax planning, you can greatly reduce your taxes substantially. Like in your case, you're hiring your child. Yep. Well, because your kids are less than 17, that works for you. However, my daughter's over 17, so it doesn't work as well for me. So I'm looking to max my 401ks and my long-term cares, whereas by you could care less now about long-term care and retirement per se. So a lot depends on your age. A lot depends on uh, the business you're in. Mm -hmm. A lot depends on the goals of your company. But selecting the right entity can help you drastically reduce your taxes as a business owner. Yeah, I'm reading this book, uh, Vivid Vision. I told you about yeah, it. It was yeah. just talking about like seeing where you want to be in three years. And I sure. think a lot of times people can become uh, almost get caught up in the, the flow of today social media yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just copy what everybody else is yeah. doing. And it doesn't fit where they're going. You're right. Um, so it, it's really important to understand where you're going and what entity mm -hmm. best fits you, whether that's an S corp or C corp. Yeah. I don't think anybody needs to do so prior to, but yeah. it kind of yeah. depends, but where are you going? Like, are you trying to buy a house? Are you trying to save for retirement? Yeah. Like, what are your goals? That's true. You know, and I think back to something Steve Kobe, an old school book now, like the eight habits of a successful person. Mm -hmm. He talked about beginning with the end in mind. Yeah. And then the prophet Isaiah said, uh, begin with the end in mind. So they both said the very same thing. And it's almost like you're working reverse. If I know I want to retire by the age of 40. Right. Okay. Then what do I need to be doing today to retire at 40? If I know that I want to take a company public, then there's certain things I'm going to do about my business now to take it public because I know if I want to go public and I've had a bad business model when it was not public, then going public is going to be more challenging. Absolutely. So, you know, like you said before, you, you, you have to make decisions with the future in mind, period. And, and really, man, what I've been doing a little bit, a lot more lately, actually, is just sometimes you just got to keep your head down yeah. and do what's best for you and yeah. what your goals are, not worry about all the noise on the outside. You, you, you're right. You're right. Uh, you know, like you said before in a couple of episodes, a lot of social media stuff is hype and, and, and people are quick to get an opinion based on what others are saying. And, but it's from a weak source, yep. it's from a real weak source. Yep. But, but the other point too, is the fact that, and that's when really a strategic plan comes into place. Yeah, You know, people talk a lot about business plans and business plans have their place, but my strategic plan is on about three sheets, three sheets. And that's something I can look at every day in less than seven minutes and relive it and dream again. And but so even when it comes to tax strategies and fulfilling goals, you need to have a strategic plan. And I all I love this principle. It's very simple. Everyone should possess a plan that provides them the possibility to live their dream life. Yep. And if you don't have a plan, a simple plan to live your dream life, you just wish for thinking now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I know I used to want to take over the world and make all the money, but yeah. 
I'm I I value my time more now. Well said. So cash flow and um income like off rental property and stuff yeah. like that is more important to me than trying to, you know, have a office in all 50 states or something like that. You got it, man. You got it. You know, uh, I believe that systems solidify success. Yep. And like you said before, it should get to a point you can tell you're doing something right when you're working less but making more. And yep. that seems a little funny when you're working less but making more or money's coming in from sources that you have to investigate to see which one of your marketing strategies worked or your sales rep did or your campaigns worked. So that's a key sign to know if things are going well, that you're working less, but you're making more. Agreed 100%. So we talked about the first one, one of the um, ways to cut expenses. Mm -hmm. um, well, obviously, was to increase the cash flow. What, what, what other tips did you have for cutting tail with the business? Uh, I think the other thing, expenses overall, I, I like to look at my expenses as return on investment. Right. Okay. Every one of my expense needs to justify they deserve to be part of my company. Okay. In other words, if I'm going to spend $3,000 a month on marketing, I want to know, is that $3,000? What's the return on investment of it versus $3,000 on a person versus $3,000 on a piece of equipment versus $3,000 on a new location? Right. So, you know, we talk about return on investments on an investment perspective, but we don't talk about a return on investments on an expense. Yes. And the expenses that are not yielding the greater return on investments, I'm going to reduce those and reallocate to those returns that are doing 100 or maybe 200%. Got it. And that's something people really have to do item by item is to see what the return on the investment is for every one of their expenses. I agree, man. That's the fun part of business to me. It you is. Know, you get to look at the numbers and see what's working, what's not. And you can almost predict your future <laughs> if you get it done right. You're right, man. You're so. right. And it goes back to a person's health. You're into well, health and wellness. You know that if a person can get their blood pressure at a certain level, or maybe reduce their fat content or other things, body fat or something like that. You can almost begin to predict how healthy they're going to be. Yep. You can predict maybe even how close to how long they're going to live. I mean, that kind of thing there without being a doctor. Mm -hmm. And numbers are a language. Yep. And if you understand the language, like you're saying, you can interpret what's happening now, what happened in the past, and what's going to happen in your futures because people lie. But numbers never lie. Never <laughs> lie, man. I believe that's a lyric in a rap song. But I'm Is it really? <laughs> man, I tell, okay, let's get this thing going. I'm ready, man. <laughs> oh, man. So any, any other tips on cutting tail with the business? I think the final thing I got, man, is going to be the debt piece. Here's a principle one of my coaches told me years ago that stayed with me. He says, only incur debt, only borrow when the return is greater than that which you borrowed. We are not anti-debt. We're anti-lazy debt. Mm -hmm. The you know, I'm buying something and my debt stays the same, but the value that something is going down. Gotcha. I don't mind value. I don't mind borrowing a hundred thousand dollars if somebody else's money can make me another hundred thousand. So it's okay to have debt. And again, you got to evaluate the debt in your business. And I don't even think about debt per se. Is it tax deductible? And sure, in your business, it's going to be. But my mindset is if I'm going to borrow $100,000, how much of a return is this $100,000 going to make me? Yeah. And if it's not going to do a greater return, why well, borrow it? And then on the flip side, all my bad debt, I want to begin to eradicate mm -hmm. because it's taking or reallocate. Either I'm going to eradicate it or reallocate it to a place that has a greater return on investment. Agreed 100%. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about like, um, like if somebody wanted to buy Tesla, mm -hmm. um, instead of buying that Tesla, they went and brought a rental property mm -hmm. and used the cash flow from that to pay for the Tesla? Well, you, I mean, I can't say any better than that's it, my friend. Because like you just said, they took the 100000 Because sure, Get your Tesla, man. My wife wants one and she's changed her mind now, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's nothing. We want you to have those nice toys. But the thing is, what does a nice toy come from? If it comes from an asset that's buying it, go get your nice toy. Is it coming from your labor? Wait until there's an asset in place that can buy the toy. And then on top of that, make the Tesla, guess what? A business vehicle. <laughs> so now I'm cruising in my Tesla. 
And I don't mean I got to put all those things on the side of it, Graphic et cetera. Design, I don't right. have to do all that stuff. They're yeah. simple ways. But get the Tesla, uh, get your nice one, make it a business deduction, and uh, enjoy life. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I was looking at one last night, so I, I'm not getting about a Tesla, okay. Man, all this gas shortage. Yeah. <laughs> but they're electric, man. I know. You ain't got to worry about gas. Okay. Hint, hint. All right. But well, Joe right now is looking at a hybrid one between, of course, the gas and the electricity. So uh, that will probably be the next purchase, I'm sure, before the year's over, where uh, things are going. I think I was looking at a Model Y, I want to say. The one that seats seven. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's... it's hundred it, and what? It's a hundred. Um, if you get the long range. One. I said it again. And so how much? A hundred. So one more time. A hundred. Okay. I had to hit three times to get it. I got it now, folks. I'm going to use that word one day, but not on the podcast today. <laughs> yeah, I think I need a couple more to families for that one. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. you go. But, but you know, in a nutshell with business owners, well, again, when we talk about business, we're talking about systems. Yep. We're not talking about just you doing it all, having a system. That's the biggest difference. And we're talking about managing that business. And it's all about getting those taxes down, mm -hmm. those expenses down, those debts down, whereby you have massive cash flow because it is the rocket fuel to build wealth. If you're cash flowing 20, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 a month, then it's easier to grow than if you're cash flowing 1,000 a month. Agreed 100%. It just frees you up for opportunity. It does. Because uh, I remember one time I lost a deal and I end with this. Mm -hmm. um, and you told me, it's so true. You said the opportunity of a lifetime comes around once a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I was like, what? Once a week, man? What are you talking about? I was just yeah. so hurt about losing that deal. But the opportunity of a lifetime does come around pretty often. It does. It's just, are you in position to take advantage of it? And having the mindset, like we said before, you have to learn to see with your mind what your eyes are going to miss. Yep. And you're right. I mean, I guarantee today that probably everyone on this podcast is going to pass some opportunities today, but they will not see them. But the ones that are really stretching their minds, they'll see them. And I'll, I'll end with this. I, th I was reading my old notes and a, a principle that I hadn't said in years said this. You can tell when your mind is expanding when you look at something old, but you see something new, mm -hmm. something I've seen over and over. And that, oh, I've never seen that before. Oh, you're growing as a person. Agreed, agreed. Well, that wraps up episode 18. Council Glenn. Hey, William V. Thompson. And see you guys on the next one. All right.